It's five o'clock on a Wednesday and it's time for... Craig and Ryan's Magic Review Show. I'm Craig. I'm Ryan. Welcome back to another review show. We have got some very interesting tricks. In fact, I'm not happy because, frankly, we've got four tricks that we're looking at this week. Two of them I don't think are particularly great and I ended up with the two not-so-great tricks. Two of them are absolutely awesome and he ended up with the two that are awesome. I just don't see how this is fair or how it's worked out but there you go I got a rubbish trick last week you did get a rubbish trick last week that's very true um anyway without further ado we're going to go straight into it and we're going to start off with a really highly anticipated trick that's been uh, kind of talked about a lot in the magic community and it's by julio montoro so let's have a look at that one right now so the first trick we've got this week is make your choice and it's by julio montoro presents and it's by julio montoro and Juan Capilla, I think I said that correctly. And uh, basically what we have here is a close-up version of, um, of Mice and Men. Now, if you don't know what, I think it's called of Mice and Men. If you don't know what that is, that is Tom Stone's uh, trick that he brought out through Vanishing Ink. I remember when I first saw him do it at the uh, Ron's Day International Convention, where you come out and you've got five different... Um, pieces of cards, someone rolls a dice, and it's kind of, a lot of people know it's the hug kill trick. Uh, it's based on um, uh, Dice Man by Andy Nyman. Anyway, uh, this is like a close-up version of that with a different method, so you don't need a dice. It, it almost kind of feels a little bit like a close-up bank night, um, but it's big enough that you could do it in parlour and perhaps even a small stage show. Um, and what's really nice about it is it's completely adaptable and customizable to any situation. Now, I think you should perform it first of all, if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, and then once you've performed it, you can show, uh, we can talk to everyone about what we think. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Let's do a full performance right now. I've got these cards here and they've got numbers on. One, two, three, four and five. Now I'm going to do this trick on Mummy and I'm going to let you win some money. Okay. I want you to name any number. Uh, three. Three? Yeah. Are you, is there any reason you name three? No, just because it's in the middle, really. <laughs> Good enough reason. Now, I'm just going to take this out. Okay. So, I said you'll get to win some money. You won a pound. Oh, okay. That could pound be... to put in my shopping trolley, thanks. Yeah. But if you named any other number... Um, what? <laughs> I got a hundred pounds. How is that fair? <laughs> you could have at least put a twenty on there for. <laughs> Okay, so that was a really good performance, Ryan. That was really, really good. And what you just saw there is exactly what this trick is. So you have the... I think it's um, a really good trick. I absolutely love this. Trick of the week. Definitely trick of the week. Now, what's really nice about this is you can fold it up in next to nothing. I mean, that will just fit into your top pocket very, very easily. I don't have a top pocket. I know you haven't, right? But if you're out doing mix and mingle or table hopping, that'll fit into your top pocket. And for an opener to a big table, this is great because you literally have it here. You ask someone for a number, uh, number four, for example. Are you sure you want number four? Yes, you do. Brilliant. It's interesting that you name number four. And it is literally that clean. In that motion, you take it out, number four, you show it's got the pound on it, and then you can show the others Basically have got... Basically, did what I just did, but not number three. Yeah, exactly, uh, because I just I just made it up. So uh, that that's what it is. It's an almost instant reset. You just need to put this back in here, and once you put it back in here, it's reset. Um, everything here is examinable. Everything here is examinable. This isn't examinable. Julio talks about how you can make this examinable, which you could do very, very easily. Although, to be honest, I think that that's overkill. I don't think anybody is going to want to examine this. I think it's a case of running when you're not being chased. Um, Hang on. I figured out how to make it examinable already on my own. Yeah, well, Julio's got a really good way of doing that. But to be honest, I don't think people are going to want to examine this. I don't think it's an issue, Ryan, to be perfectly honest. I don't think it's yeah. a problem. I don't think it's an issue. But if I do, you've got the problem solved. you got the problem solved, exactly. Um, what's really nice about this is these, all of these little pieces of card here are basically dry wipe. So you can wipe this off very, no. very easily. And you can put on there whatever it is that you want on there. So if you like... Well, if you, I'm, I'm, if you like the hug kill presentation where 
uh, you know, somebody picks hug. Although, although with COVID these days, you might want to try and change it to fist bump and then kill. So you walk over to the table and you say, you know, there's lots of different ways of greeting people when I walk over to a table. You get to decide which one. Give me a number from one to five, two, what's on two? Oh, it's a fist bump. Boom. It's a good job you picked fist bump or whatever it may be. There's lots of different ways that you can customize this. Julio talks in the download about some different ideas, but to be honest, I think the best ideas haven't been explored yet. I think that people that are fairly creative will come up with their own ideas with this. Um, but you can literally, it's, it's a bit of a cliche line, but your imagination, is, there's no limit to it because literally anything that you think of, you can, you can put on there. Um, it doesn't even be numbered on this side. You can change that to whatever you want to. One idea that Julio's got is you can have names of celebrities on the other side. So you can have names of uh, five different celebrities. And when they name a celebrity, you turn it round and it's got a tick and all the others have got crosses. And there's lots of different ways that you can do this. Um, but as I say, what's really nice about it is it fits in the pocket. It literally packs small, plays big. It does, um, which is what it says on the box. Packs small, plays big. Yeah. It is easy to do. And it is a free choice. I don't even know what that's Customizable, thing. which it is. You can change it to anything that you want to. Uh, you performed it. How difficult is it? It's it's really easy, isn't it? Like yeah. literally, um, you yeah. It's a fourteen minute download. That's all it needs to be. Uh, in that fourteen minutes, Julio goes through everything with a with a fine tooth comb and explains absolutely everything. Um, it's well made as well. It'll last a lifetime. Um, I was a little bit worried about um how th th this would last, but having now looked at the props. This is going to last a very, very long time. I don't think you're going to have to worry about this breaking. The one thing that I'd say is that this is very overpriced for what it is, because basically what you have here are a few cheap dry white boards and, um, and uh, a, a, you know, a piece of plastic that you can get off the internet for a quid. Uh, I, yeah, for the price that he's charging, it? for, it's like 65 quid, something like that. Um, for the price that it's charging, it's very expensive. For the for what you're getting, it's very expensive. Although, to be honest, like I've said before, the creator has a right Should to charge. Should it only be like fifteen pounds? Well, I don't know. I, I I would have put this at like a thirty, forty, thirty, thirty-five have, pound price. I would have put it at fifteen. Oh, would you? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Lots of people would like to buy it because it's really good. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing: creators can charge what they want. Yes. I've bought some Scott Alexander tricks in the past, which have cost me like five six hundred pounds and that. i've had like 20 quid's worth that. of stuff yeah exactly i mean there's some stuff that, that it, yeah, it, bottom line is he can charge what he wants for it it's his yeah. product he can charge what he wants it's also to, up to us as the end consumer whether we choose to buy it or not i think it's expensive i think it's overpriced however i do think it's a very good trick yes. i am 100 percent going to be putting this in my act i love sign, this sign, yeah sign, i know that sign, you will yeah sign. it's 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 very it's it's just it's one of the, it's almost the perfect opener because you know the opener i've talked about this on the channel before you've got to establish credibility you've got to do something that grabs people's attention and you want to do something different to what they've seen before and this ticks all the boxes i mean this absolutely ticks all the boxes you bring this thing out hey uh guys i'd like to give people a free choice i'd like to make my show interactive uh so very quickly sir you over there can you do me a favor can you give me a number one two three four five number three very good sir number three is a 50 pence you won 50 pence there you go sir there's 50 pence wonderful uh, I, I like to give money away to people. <laughs> I find it makes them like me a little bit more. Of course, if you picked any other number, it would have been. Whatever it may be, I think it's a great you could have won a, No, imagine if you let them win a f million pounds, but they just won one pence. I know, right? Um, that would be crazy. The, there's the, lots of, you, some people don't like doing that negative style presentation where you win big and, you know, with, they, they, oh, you could have won this, but you didn't. You won this. Uh, and if you don't like that, like I say, it's customizable. You can do what you want with it. You could let them win an apple. <laughs> yeah. You could let them win green apple, red apple. Yeah, and it doesn't even need to be about winning money. It can be a million different things. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's really good. I'm definitely doing it in my act. He's definitely doing it in his act. It's easy to do. It's customizable. It packs small, plays big. Well, not act on the stage, but act in person, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, even on stage, this would work. Yeah, it would work on stage, but I'm, I'm not going to do it. You're more about the cubes on stage, aren't you? More about the cubes. More about the cubes. More about the cubes. More about the cubes. I'm going to give this 95%. I think this is really good, despite being overpriced. I think it is really good, and I think that anybody who buys it won't be disappointed. 
um, because the method is sound um, and pretty much angle proof. I mean, when, uh, although you can't have people directly behind you, if you bring it into your body, people won't be able to see anything. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going to give this 95%. Uh, what about you? 99. 99%. So 99%. Just one because it's overpriced. It's overpriced. Ninety nine percent from Ryland, ninety five percent from me. Uh, I would say this is trick of the week as well. What would you say? Trick of the week. Trick of the week. So we started off with the trick of the week. This is really good. Ninety five, ninety nine. Trick of the week. Let's move on with the next review. Right. So what we got next, Roy? Rolling Stones by John Kennedy. The stones roll by themselves and make a prediction. Um, what you get is you get this little uh, silver case. Everything we is. Got a, we got a puppy print on it. We has got a puppy print on it. Well, that's a you know which way's up. Uh, but this is uh, this is everything. Everything is self-contained it for the trick inside here. So you just put that in your pocket, and as long as you've got a deck of cards, you're good to go. Uh, there's a few different things that you could do with this, but the presentation that comes with it uh, that John Kennedy suggests is as a card revelation. And rather than try and talk you through what the card revelation looks like, I'm going to perform it for you very, very quickly. So I'm going to perform this trick for you, and then we'll talk about what we think. Okay, Ryland, do you remember the story of Jack and the Beanstalk? Yes. And he, he gets some magic beans. Yes. And it makes a, a, a beanstalk. Yeah. And he climbs up and goes with the golden egg and all that. Magic beans exist. What? No, I didn't think they existed. Magic beans exist. I met a man. Uh, I was going to the market. And I met a man. And, and he, he offered to sell me his magic beans. And I said, yes, and I've got them here. He sold me seven magic beans. Now, they're not as good as Jack's beans. They won't, um, in fact, they're not even beans. They're more like stones, but they, they, they won't make a, be a bean stalk appear or anything like that. I can't get a goose that lays a golden egg, but they can help me with card tricks. So I've got magic bean struck stones that help me with card tricks. Would you like to see? Yes. So I've got this deck of cards, right? 52 cards. Now, before I do anything, just give them a quick shuffle, make sure they're all mixed up. And when they've shuffled, let me know. And you, my little friend, can take any card that you want. So I'm just going to go through uh, any card. Uh, I'll keep going if you want to. So that one there, you sure? Yeah, take it out then. Have a look at the card. Now show everyone, don't show me. You got it? Yeah. Okay, remember the card. Say stop. Stop. Right, put the card back there. Would you say that's about halfway down, something like that, yeah? Yeah. It's about halfway down. And what we'll do is we'll give the cards a quick shuffle as well, just to make sure that it is absolutely, completely and totally lost in the deck. And we'll give the cards a few cuts. How's that? Is that fair? Yeah. Fair, isn't it? Yeah. Now watch, I'm going to cut the cards. I'm going to give the cards a few cuts. We're going to cut here, 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 and here. So somewhere in one of these packets is your card. Okay. Now here's how I'm going to find it, using my magic beans. Uh, or my magic stones. You see, if I just wave them over the packets, I can feel them moving inside and they'll start moving on the packet that contains your card. Right, okay, they're moving. That tells me your card is in that packet, which means that your card is not in any of these three packets. Do you see your card? No. See, it's going well. But now we need to figure out where in this packet. Well, let me show you something. This is where the this is where the magic of the beans uh, the beans come in. Or as I say, they're not really beans; they're more stones. Let me uh, let me just show you them. Can you can you see them here? Yeah. Yeah. Watch. If I just do this, right? Tell me, tell me where the card is. Tell me. Oh, do you see that? Look, they've 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 moved into what looks like a number seven. Can you see that? Yeah. Well, that can only mean one thing. Hang on a minute. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Do you see your card there? No. Do you see your card here or here or here? No. Do you see your card here, 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 here or here? No. That can only mean one thing, that the lucky magic bean stroke stone things have found your three of spades. What's there? Okay, so that was uh, Rolling Stones by John Kennedy. I, I don't really like this. What about you? Same. Why do you not like it? Because I, I saw the... the uh... I saw the download. No, yeah, we both I, saw... Yeah, we, I saw it, and as soon as I saw the thing, and what was inside it, when I, when we after we watched it, I was like, that was a bit naff. And I thought the gimmick was very fragile. Yeah, I didn't... And I think that the spectators are going to want to examine it, and, and 
No way can this be examined. <laughs> no, I mean, you've got some very good points there. I didn't even like it before I saw the method. Same. <laughs> because I just didn't think it looked particularly impressive. If you could really do magic, would you really have little stones roll around and make a number seven or whatever it may be? I, I, I just came think... up with a good presentation for it. Well, I mean, it's, it's yeah, I mean, it's the best presentation I could come up with, but it's still not that great a trick to be perfectly it's honest. It has got a puppy print on it. There's a few things that I, um, I I don't like. Like he said, I think this is going to want to be examined. I think when you start doing this thing where um, um, the stones are rolling around inside this little case, they are they want to examine the case. They can't. They can't even touch the case. They can't go anywhere near the case. In fact, the further back that you are from them, the better when it comes to actually doing this trick. So I, I think that immediately... And, and I get this wrong sometimes, and sometimes... And I've harped on about this on the channel before and I go, oh, you know, I don't think things need to be examined and oh, I don't think people are going to want to examine this deck. But when, when, when little stones are rolling around and making a number seven, I think people are going to want to examine that. But do stones move without you touching them? No, and, and they can't examine them. Um, so I think that's quite an issue with this. Also, it requires, I mean, th he said it's fragile. It is fragile in a way because of the method that's used. It's a method that's used in have, several tricks. You have to pull it back. You do have to pull it back. Which will probably break it. Eventually, I think this will break. And the problem with it is there's no instructions on here about how to fix it if it does break. It doesn't um, come with extra gimmick. It, it doesn't come with anything well, extra. Any, anything to fix the gimmick. No, it doesn't, which is also another problem. And I just don't even think it's that impressive, to be Same. perfectly honest. I mean, it's like, if you're going to do something, if you're going to do magic, you know, I, I think there's a million tricks out there that look more impressive than little black pebbles rolling around to make a number Are seven. I think they're gray. I think they're black. Yeah, yeah they're, they're black. black. They're black. Yeah. You know, I, this moment here where you go, oh, look, look, they're moving into it. I just don't think that looks great. It, but immediately, you have to, thing, but but immediately you have to put it away. Um, so and it, I suppose and then from, walk away. Yeah, I mean, do you, it as your entry. Walk away straight. I mean, the the advantage is it's immediately reset. So uh, left a I, yeah, I can see that. I'll fix it later. So it's immediately reset uh, to do again, which is which is good. So you can do, it. but it doesn't change from table to table. So it's always going to move into the number seven. The little pebble things are always going to go into the number seven. Um, it is a regular deck of cards. So the deck isn't so surprised with it. If the people speak afterwards and note what they've all seen, then if and they're like, "Oh, I saw this trick where the stones moved into a seven. Oh, it was a seven for me. A seven for me. Seven for me. Seven for me." Yeah, exactly. So no, any other number. There's no, there's no variation there, which is which is important to note. It doesn't come with the deck of cards. It's a regular deck of cards. It's a shuffle deck in you're use. You're supposed to get a card, pack of cards. No, you're not meant to get a deck of cards. So they use any pack of cards. Um, and, uh, you know, the method for getting the card into the relevant position works. It's fine. John goes through it quite clearly. I used a slightly different method. Um, but, you know, there's a million different ways to get that card into the seventh position. Um, I, I just think it's a little bit uninspiring. I expect more from John Kennedy. I'm a big fan of John's material. I'm a big fan of a lot of his creations. Like I said, Flight Deck, absolutely love Mystery Flight Case. Box. Mystery Box, absolutely love. Impossible Matrix, absolutely love. Mind Power Deck, absolutely love. There's a whole bunch of stuff that he's brought out that I really like. I've done a review show special on him in the past. But this is I'm underwhelming at best. I think it's like a good download, so I'm, I'm going to give it 5%. You're going to give it 5% because like the instructions the download, yeah. Because the instructions were clear. Right, okay. 5% because <laughs> yeah. the instructions Five. were clear. I'm, going to, I'm not going to be as harsh as you. I think that there's probably, there might be somebody out there that looks at this and they go, oh my gosh, I've been waiting my entire life to do a trick with stones rolling around and making a number seven. And if that's the case, hey. Would <laughs> anyone want to do it? Well, like, uh, you just know, seven. Only seven. You never know. I mean, there's, there's, there's. If I got it last year, I would have been quite excited. Well, because it was your seven. You were seven. <laughs> yeah. But um, this year. So yeah. It's almost my ninth birthday. So I know it is almost. It's not like last year. Um. Yeah. I'm. I'm going to give it fifty percent. It's not terrible. It's not like a terrible trick. Um, it's just, I don't particularly like it. I think that there's better ways of doing card revelations. And ultimately what we have here is a, is a fun little card revelation. You might like it. And if you like it, great. Just be careful of the angles. Be careful of the lighting because of the method that's being used. 
direct light or sunlight or something like that will probably expose how this trick works so you need to be aware that if you buy it you have to do it in certain lighting conditions uh, also be aware that the app because of that lighting conditions angles can be a little bit of an issue and you need to be careful with it because it's a certain type of material that could break over time um and, and I think people are going to want to examine it and they can't. But, uh, you know, maybe maybe it's for you. It's definitely not for me. Not for me. 50% for me. 50! I said 50%. It's not 50, did you say? 50. Wait, take away the zero. No. Take away the zero. You give it 5%. You give it whatever you want to. I'm giving it whatever I want to. I'm giving it 50%. It's not the worst 50. trick in the world, but it's very I'm going uninspiring. Up, I'm, I'm going up to 15. You go. 10. <laughs> the 7 is visual. I'll say that, that's good as well. Yeah, it's quite visual, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but people are going to want to examine it, so I'm just going to give it a 15. 15% from him, 50% from me. Let's move on. And the next trick is Socks by Michael Hoyt. Oh, socks by Michael Hoyt. Now, I've been doing socks for a very, very long time. If you guys don't do socks, you need to do socks. Um, they seem to bring out a variation of socks every holiday season. I've got Christmas socks for when I do my Christmas shows. Now I've got Halloween socks. You've got the normal socks. I'm pretty sure that Vanishing Inc. are just going to end up bringing out socks for every single month socks, of the socks, year. Socks, socks, We're going to have 4th of July socks. We're going to have pancake socks. We're going to have summer socks. We're going to have wedding socks. We're going to have Hanukkah socks. We're just going to get socks for absolutely everything. We're going to get speech socks. <laughs> you never know. Aeroplane socks. Aeroplane socks. Holiday. Um, this is this is Halloween socks. Now, if you don't know what socks is, the idea is it's a it's kind of a multi phase routine. Don't give, the, don't give it away. Don't give it away. You want to perform it? You here. can say it afterwards. Okay. Once I've performed it, so we'll perform it now. Okay. Why don't we? I'll get Ryland to perform it, and then we'll explain uh, yeah. what we think of it. Yeah. I've got a pack of robot cards here. Okay. I've got robot cards. Well, they are your favourite cards. Yes. Um, what's there? 52. Uh, yeah. 52 there. All there, all different. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. Now, I'm going to get you to pick a card. All you have to do is just say stop. Stop. There. Mm hmm. Okay, so you got that one. Okay, I've got it. Okay. Mm hmm. Now, we'll lose that into the pack. Okay, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. I'll put that back. I'll put the deck back in the box. All right. Put it over there. I won't touch it. There you, you go. Won't touch it. No. Okay. Now you know I lose a lot of my socks. Yeah. My you lose collection. all of your socks. What do you mean a few of your socks? Uh, uh, yeah. Every sock gets lost. This is my sock collection. I don't even think he has any matching socks at this point. I don't. Like I've got socks here. These are your socks. Yeah. You took pictures of your socks. Yes. This is That's my weird. sock collection. They're all Halloween socks. Yes, because I've lost all my other ones. I've lost all my other socks. I've only got Halloween socks. Okay, right. <laughs> Why <Yeah>. not? <laughs> yeah. So, I'm going to flip these cards over. Okay. Like that. Yeah. And then, you're going to say stop anywhere. Anywhere at all? Anywhere at all. Stop. I want that one right there. That one right there, okay. So, that is this one. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, pack it there. We'll do the same with this one. So you're going to get me to pick a card from here as well? Yeah, pick a card from here. Okay, and I can stop anywhere I want. Anywhere you want. Keep going. There, that one. This one? Mm hmm Okay, so that will be there. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so we can't know at the moment. No. Yeah, now... None of these socks match. Show me. Okay. No, I don't see matching socks here. I'll go all the way through so you don't see. Well, okay, that's fair. You want to go all the way through? Why not? Makes it longer, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's some cool socks here. Yeah, scary. Yeah, okay, none of those socks match. None of them match. No, none of the socks match. Yeah. Yeah. Are you telling me those two socks are going to match? You, well... No way. They're not matching. No, no, but, they're completely not matching. But. But what? Is the first sock. You see it? I'll drop that one. <laughs> you got that one. You see the first sock? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you predicted that sock. Very cool. 
And you predicted that sock. Okay, very cool. Very, very cool. Very cool. But if I wanted to make these, um, hang on. If I want, to... now remember, they're all they're all different. Yeah, 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 yeah. So are these. Yeah, 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 yeah. All different. Yeah. But if I wanted to make them match, I just have to snap. No way. Look at that. Now all the socks match. Oh, I took the cards from there. What am I doing? What are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> all these socks match. Wow. That is very cool. They do all indeed match. They do all indeed match. That's very cool. Now remember, remember I asked you at the beginning to pick a card. Yeah, I do, what yeah. What was that called? It was the two of clubs, mate. Two of clubs, well, okay. <laughs> there's, a, there's a two on the bottom of his foot. By the way, his feet are also ticklish. <laughs> there you go, yeah, okay, so two there. And there's a club there, and his feet are also still ticklish. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay, so that was that was socks. Uh, like I say, I've been doing this for years. There's videos on this channel of me performing it somewhere. Uh, and in actual fact, I put a video up. It was one of the very first videos I uploaded onto Magic TV. Uh, and it's called Improving the Sock Trick. I'll put a link down below. And it was my handling of socks because uh, my problem with the original handling of socks is when you're doing the force, it's very, I don't want to say dodgy, but it's very worrying. Uh, if you don't get the timing right on it, and I believe Michael gets it right every single time, I'm sure he does, but I really struggled with the timing of that force. So I put my own, uh, well, not my own force, but I had, uh, I applied a different force to it that works better for me. So I'll show you that uh, that video if you want to see it. I'll I'll put a link to it. That's the handling okay, that Ryland used. I want to see it. I want to see it. Okay, well, I taught you the handling for it. That's the handling you just used. But if you want to watch it, you can. Uh -huh. um, but okay. yeah, I mean, this, this trick is amazing. A lot of people have said to me that this trick is only really suitable for a parlor performance. But I perform no. this... I perform this mix and mingle stage, all the time. Stage. You could do this on stage if you stage, wanted to, so you yeah. Go, not matching, not matching, and then go, and then like if you have like big long socks over it, and then you like take the sock off. Well, I roll my I, yeah, I roll my shoe, my jeans up or my trousers up that I'm wearing, yeah, and so. Uh, I, I I I would just wear like. Um, other big socks, like my football socks. I, I do this mix and mingle all the time and I have them hold their hands out and I deal the cards into their hands. It works brilliantly mix and mingle. Uh, it's it, For me, it's one of the perfect mix and mingle tricks. And uh, the force that I, I go through on the video uh, works brilliantly for mix and mingle. So this is a this is a great trick that works in pretty much every environment. Yeah. I find that that hook line of oh my gosh, I constantly lose my socks really kind of resonates <laughs> with I most do. people. I, I know do. you, you genuinely I do. do. Um, and and I love the idea of having Halloween socks for Halloween and and, and Christmas, Christmas socks for Christmas. And normal. Yeah, I, I I mean I I've never reviewed socks before because when the original socks what? came out, it was before Magic TV started. Uh, but it's been in my act for a very, very long time. These Halloween socks are great. If you don't own socks... I like the O with the witch's hand. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that. If you don't own socks, then really you should do. Because it's, I think it's a modern as classic. As in, like, not socks, as in, like, you wear socks. This socks, as yeah. in, like, normal socks. Yeah, exactly. That socks. Um, it's a modern classic. It's something that I think everybody... It's going to become... If it's not already considered a modern classic, I think it will become a modern classic. I don't um, know what it is. I, I love it. I perform it same, all the time. Same, same, same. Uh, I have, like, I, when I bought the original socks, here's how much I love it. I bought 10 of the original socks. Wait, did um, you get a packet for me? No, no, not really. But you can have the Halloween socks. I got, I got yeah, 10. Yeah, but then I can only do stuff at Halloween. You got 10 packs, man. <laughs> 10. <laughs> Get all to yourself. It's so that I. It's so that sometimes mommy doesn't wash the socks all the time. It's so that I can always have a pair of socks because I take them and I, I put them in one. my. You can just have two, and I can have two, and then the rest can be spare. I'll give you a pair of socks, okay? Yeah. 
<laughs> I'll give you a pair of socks. Uh, but I have a lot. I have lots of these, so that I constantly have. Yeah, I never want to be in a situation where I'm off to a gig and I go, Sarah, have you got any clean magic socks? And she's like, oh, no. I'm like, ah. So I always need to make sure that I've got a clean pair of magic socks. Um, love this. Uh, I'm getting it 100. percent I think it's one of the, the greatest tricks ever made. Uh, and if you don't already own it, you really should. That moment where you know, I love. You know, different people My play. My favourite moment is when you show the back of your socks and it says two of clubs. Yeah. Um, I, you know what? Some people have said to me in two. the past, I don't do the matching thing. Uh, that, that They just you do don't, the prediction. I do. I they do. just do the prediction. Some people don't do the matching thing. I think the magic thing, matching thing is a great kicker. You know, you've just shown that the socks uh, have been predicted on your feet. And then you go back and you go, of course, remember none of these socks match. Boom. Now they all match. It makes a great finale to the whole thing. That's why I like it so much. I'll be honest, the card revelation on the bottom of the feet, I don't do that very often. These are um, actually big socks. But they are, yes. They go up to here. Luckily, really. you've got big feet. i got big feet. Yeah. They fit my feet perfectly. I know they do. So there you go. I'm going to give this... Uh, I'm going to give these this... These are like football socks. What are you giving this, Ryland? Um, 119. 119. Hang on, it can't be because it's not trick of the week. It doesn't matter. You can give it whatever you want to. Okay, 119. 119 from Ryland. Uh, 100% from me. This trick is absolutely amazing. It's highly recommended. And uh, it's, it's the perfect trick for parlour or close-up, kid shows. It's just, it runs the gauntlet. It's great. Okay, so the final review is Christopher, uh, sorry, Christopher Dearman presents Christmas Monty. Uh, now, I didn't see a performance of this. I ordered it uh, because a lot of people were asking to, uh, to do a review of it. So I ordered it without looking at a performance or a trailer. I just ordered it. And then I watched the, I watched the, <laughs> I watched the performance with Ryland. And I just thought this is absolutely mental. <laughs> like completely... <laughs> mental and, and then Ryland saw it and he's like that's mental and then Sarah saw it and she went that's the worst trick I've ever seen in my life and and I now I, I just want to say I just want to say I think maybe this is because I'm from Britain or I'm from the UK and we're from the UK because apparently I was I was what this is so weird that I was like I was like are other people saying this is really weird? And I went to the Magic Cafe just to see what people were saying. And a few other people went, well, you know, you know, you don't really want to advocate guns and Christmas. And, you know, like, it's Merry Christmas. Here's a gun. You know, you don't. Um, other, and then and then the guy who created it came on here and went, oh, you're obviously not from America. Uh, this is a big thing in America. It's based on a, a film that everybody watches every Christmas and everybody will understand if you're in America, you'll understand the premise behind this trick. So maybe it's just that I'm not American. But to me, this is kind of... Bonkers. It's bonkers. It's just like, hey, you know, let's advocate uh, buying a kid a gun at Christmas. Um, I, 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 would think, I would think personally that, you know, America with gun crime would not... But maybe I'm wrong. Like, as I say, if, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. To me... As somebody who lives in England, this is just weird. I mean, this is just weird. But I'm going to perform it for you so you can have a look at it and I'll tell you what I think. Okay, right. It's uh, it's almost Christmas. A couple yes. of months till Christmas. You yes. excited? Yes. You excited about Christmas? Uh, Santa coming down the chimney, even though we haven't got a chimney and bringing lots of presents. Uh, well, this is... Uh, this is this we is have a, got a chimney. You have kind of got a chimney. <laughs> <laughs> Your mum's giving me a right look behind the camera. It's not a proper chimney, though, is it? With a big hearth and an open fire. He could. I don't see how he can fit down our chimney. Is the point I'm trying to say? Like he's only got like a little tiny gap. I don't see how he could get. I mean, he's a big bloke and it's a little chimney. I don't see how how he's going to pull that one off. To be perfectly honest, but there you go. He does every year. Anyway, it's uh, this is this is called Christmas Monty Island, and I'm going to tell you a story. Okay. Okay. I'm going to tell you a story about uh, a young boy who was, uh, it was, it was coming up to Christmas, and his dad was a card shark. Oh. Um, and his dad said, this year, I'm going to play you, we're going to play a gambling game, and if you win, then I'll get you a present. If you don't win, 
I won't get you a present, which is a bit harsh, but there you go. That's that's what his dad said. Bit of, bit, bit of kind of extreme parenting there, if you ask me, but there you go. That's 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 what he said. I don't think he'd be happy if I did that. Ryland, we're going to have a gambling game. If I win, you don't, you get presents. If uh, if I win, you don't get any presents. That'd be a bit rubbish, really, wouldn't it? But anyway, that's that's how the story went. And I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. So we've got these uh, these three cards, yes? yes? And his dad, he said to him, look, look, son. He called him son. He said, look, son, I've got three cards. Now, the idea is really simple. This card has got a Christmas tree on it right here, okay? Uh, and he said the second card, this one here, has also got a Christmas tree on it. And this card has what I know is a present that you super really want. Now, it's not Lego, which you would think. It's not like a computer game or anything like that. This card actually has a, uh, a gun on it. Uh, it's an air gun. Um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a BB gun. And um, what's a BB gun? It's kind of like a it's it's kind of like a a, a, a gun for kids kind of thing. Uh, when I was uh, when I was when I was uh, younger, they used to have these around. Uh, it's basically a gun that shoots like little pellets and things like that. What pellets? It doesn't matter. We'll talk about this another time. But the point is, it's kind of like a gun for kids, but it actually fires things. Right? Yeah. They're quite dangerous. And uh, but his son really wanted one. And so, uh, and so the idea of the game was really simple. His dad said, if you tell me where the gun is, then you get to get the gun for Christmas. And then what his dad did is he took the, uh, the card and he put it to the bottom and he said, right, where is the gun? And uh, his son said, I saw you put it at the bottom, dad. And he went, no, that's the Christmas tree. And then he went, well, if it's not on the bottom, it's got uh, to be on the top, dad. And he said, no, that's the Christmas tree. And he said, well, if it's not, if it's not on the top or the bottom, it's got to be in the middle. And he, his dad said, no, that's the, that's the Christmas tree, son. And he went, well, you're a card shot, Dad. You're obviously cheating. There is no gun in there. You must have snuck it out. And he went, no, the gun's there. And he went, well, hang on. If the gun's there, then the gun can't be on the top. That's impossible. He went, no, the gun's on the top as well. He said, well, if the gun's on the top and the bottom, the gun can't be in the middle. And he went, no, it's in the middle as well. And his son was like, well, you've got to have more than three cards, Dad. There's only one way. And he went, no, one, two, three, just three cards. And his dad said, look, I tell you what, I'll give you one last chance to win this gun. And he said, the idea is really simple. I'll turn over this card. It's got a Christmas tree on it. Turn over this card, it's got a gun on it. All you have to do is tell me what's on that card right there in the middle. If you get it right, you can have the gun for Christmas. And his, his son was like, well, it's, it's meant to be a Christmas tree, but um, I, I reckon it's the gun. I reckon it's the gun. I reckon it's the gun. And, uh, and, and his dad said, no, it's not. And you can't have a gun because you'll shoot your eye out. <laughs> and that's the, uh, that's the trick. There you go. It's well weird. So that's Christmas Monty. Um, basically, it's it's colour Monty, but instead of uh, the traditional colour Monty presentation, it's, Christmas. it's it's based around a kid getting uh, a gun, a gun pew, pew, at Christmas. Pew. And instead of having the final card that says, hey, you owe me $14 or whatever it is, the finale is that card that says... Uh, Yo, shit, yeah, my out. <laughs> you're right out. There's actually two variations of that card. There's... Uh, don't shoot your eye out and you'll shoot your eye out. I don't know, very, two weird variations. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. Aside from the fact that it's that the presentation for me is a bit weird, put aside that. Here's the thing. I I don't see that there's much creativity here. It's, it's Colour Monty. It's Emerson and West's Colour Monty done with slightly different cards. So the presentation is different. But the handling is pretty much identical. I mean, in all honesty, the handling that uh, the guy goes through on the download, I don't think he teaches the best way of doing it. I change the handling to match what how I do Colour Monty. Like his double lift at the beginning is weird. He, he pulls back two cards and it's just strange. If nobody had actually done Colour Monty before and they watched his download, I don't think the handling that he actually presents is the best way to do Colour Monty, but maybe that's just the way I do it versus the way he does it. Aside from that, don't you okay? No, no, right. No. Aside from that, it's, it's, it, it, I don't see the creativity here. Really it's that? just, it's just Colour Monty with different cards. Now, I, I think that if you're going to release a trick, at least maybe come up with a different method for it or something like But I see this all the time. Like, I remember Penguin bought a trick out a couple of years ago that was all based on Colour Monty and it was all to do with zombies. And, you know, I, there's nothing wrong with Colour Monty. And there's nothing wrong with applying Colour Monty 
to different playing cards because it is a classic for a reason and it does lend itself to lots of different presentations. For example, I've got a trick coming out with Alakazam either December or very early 2021 and it uses... 21! 22, 22, sorry. And it uses special playing cards, specially printed cards. And I actually said to Peter Nardi, who runs Alakazam, I actually said, why don't we do as a bonus routine, and I'll go through how you can use these cards for Colour Monty, because they work really well in co for Colour Monty. Taking these cards that you get as part of the set would mean that people could do Colour Monty, and it could be quite a cool, unique presentation that's very different to anything else out there. Did Alakazam do Colour Monty? No, it's Emerson and West. However, that's just a little bonus. That's like, I'm putting this project together, and this is the trick. Oh, and by the way, you can do this bonus routine with it and it, you can do color monty with these cards and this is the presentation and this is how you do it and that's kind of like it's a bonus thing i think that as a, as a as an actual trick bringing out a trick and it's like well okay here's my variation of color monty the moves are exactly the same the only thing that's changed is the printing on the cards and the presentation i don't know i just think that when there's so many different tricks you can buy don't you want to add something new to the to the to the to the magic marketplace? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm thinking that way because this trick has just come across to me as really weird. I would never. Yeah, shoot your eye. I'd never perform this in the UK. I would never perform this in the UK. I know that if I went, because at the end of the day, if I went anywhere, first of all, this isn't the sort of presentation that you would use in a corporate gig. I'm not going to go to a corporate Christmas party and go, guys, uh, get, you know, everyone's getting drunk, everyone's loud, and, and, you know, it's all really popping, and it's like, oh, okay, guys, uh, I'd like to show you something with three cards. This is a story about a kid that was one... I just don't see it work in that environment. In a family restaurant, it might work, but I know if I went up to a family restaurant and there were kids and adults on the table and I started talking about kids getting guns at Christmas, I know that I would probably get in trouble with the table uh, or I'd get in trouble with the venue because, like, that's just something that you don't I want to talk about. And when the kids start going, oh, can I have a gun for Christmas? Can I have a gun for Christmas? Can I have a gun for Christmas, please? You'd get in trouble. But again, it, it, that's uh, apparently... This is something that's very well known in America. It's based on some sort of movie that everybody watches that everybody apparently will immediately... Let me know in the comments. I mean, uh, according to the creator of this, everybody who lives in America will immediately resonate with this and, 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 and their audiences will immediately resonate with it because it's such a popular Christmas film that everybody watches like 15 or 20 times at Christmas. Is that the case? If that's the case, let me know. Would you do this? at your Christmas gigs, is this something that would work for you if no, you're in America? For me, I wouldn't do it. Uh, I don't think it's creatively um, uh, a, a really kind of different to anything else out there. I think presentationally, it's kind of really weird. And uh, I, I just, if I was gonna, if I was ever gonna do Colour Monty, I'd do it with the original Colour Monty cards. Uh, if I had a choice between this and the original Color Monty, because that's just that's just what I do. I, I, I just I don't know. It's just I don't think that they've added anything to the magic marketplace by bringing this out. This gets twenty percent from me. What about you? Mm. Mm. Okay. Ten percent. Yeah. Ten percent. So you're giving it ten percent. I'm giving it twenty percent, with the caveat that. If this is something that would work for you, if this is uh, a trick that, uh, you know, resonates with you because of a film that you've watched at Christmas and you think it will work for your audiences, by all means, get it. The, the instructions that are as a private YouTube video are well done. As I say, I don't think the handling is the best, but it does the job. Um, you know, and the cards are really well made. Uh, I don't think they're in here anyway. Yeah, the cards are really well made. They'll, they're obviously printed on bicycle stock or some sort of really high quality stocks for the last of the lifetime. So if you like the trick, by all means, buy it. I just, it's not for me. No, not for me. And that's another movie show in the back. And that's another movie show in the back. Enough, that's enough, 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 enough. Right. In the back. It is another review show. I need to stop him doing three. Two is more than enough. One is more than enough. None. That's another be... review show. In the back. Help. <laughs> Say.
send help. <laughs> Guys, thanks very much for watching the review show. Honestly, never work with animals or children. And, and never work with animals or children. Guys, thank you very much for watching the show. Really, really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this, you know what you need to do. You just need subscribe. to subscribe. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. Don't forget, if you want to follow Ryland, you can do so by following the Kid Magician, Ryland getting, the Kid Magician. I'm getting more videos up now. Yes, he is. We're currently putting uh, together a schedule where he's putting one up every single day for the next six months, which is going to be impressive, uh, uh, to say the least. So make sure that you subscribe to him on YouTube. Uh, and also, don't forget, uh, I'll be back again tomorrow on Thursday with the magic stuff. And we'll be back again next Wednesday with another review show. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Craig. I'm Ryland. We'll see you again next week. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.